Hi, I'm Fred Willard, and you're in studio with The Hollywood Reporter. So, Fred, you are an acclaimed television and film actor, but can I also say that you are a professional late-night talk show guest? <laughs> That's what I always wanted to be, a late night talk show <laughs> guest. I mean, it's amazing. It spans decades, your whole career. You've been this amazing talk show guest. I have done a lot of guest shots on uh, uh, talk shows, either promoting something that uh, I, I've been in, a movie or a TV show, or doing little sketches yes. uh, on the programs. And I, I've always loved that. I've always loved short, sweet Funny little sketches. Yes. Uh, there is an amazing compilation on YouTube of your appearances on the David Letterman show, Late Night. David Letterman was always fun. I'd get a last-minute call from him to fly to New York. And, uh, uh, yeah, and, and I would always plan something pretty unusual. The most unusual thing I could do to, to do it. I came in with several uh, different angles. Yes. I remember once I came on, the one that comes to mind, I had them put a knife in my chest, and I came on and <laughs> sat down and said, do you notice how angry people are in New York are getting like <laughs> um, And he was very, uh, you know, he went along with it. He, he's, he's a good straight man. Yeah. Yeah, one of the ones that I saw that I really loved was when you came, uh, came on the show undressed and had your suit with you. Oh, I pretended I just found out that, I just remember that day that I was on the show because someone said, hey, aren't you on Letterman tonight? <laughs> yeah. And I came on so I had to change and, and uh, from what, my street clothes into a nice outfit. Yes. For Letterman. Yeah, thanks. So you had to get undressed yeah, and then undressed dressed and again. Dressed. Yeah, that took a lot of practice. <laughs> but let's talk about your recent collaboration with Jimmy Kimmel. Yes. So how did that come about? The government uh, started talking about creating a space force. Yes. Now, it just so happens that some 30 or 35 years ago, I was in a TV pilot uh, called Space Force. <laughs> yes. And someone Googled it and said, oh, they, they actually were going to make a series out of this. It was a spoof on uh, Star Trek and those, and, and I was the lead. And, oh, it was Fred Willard. Fred Willard's still around. Let's get him in and uh, put him in one of those crazy outfits. and Back in the jumpsuit. Yeah. The, <laughs> Which didn't look much much worse than the one that was actually used in the pilot. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it was very, it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And the idea was that I was still around and still pushing for the idea of a space force. <laughs> um, then a couple of weeks later, they called again and asked me to come in. And I think I played George Washington. Yes, a, a ghost yeah. to George Washington. Yeah. And then a week or two later, they called me, and I was Fred Trump, Donald Trump's father. <laughs> yes. And I became all sorts of characters. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's just about every two weeks, they would call to have me come in. And I love it because they, it's, um, they, they'll call the, like 11 o'clock in the morning and say, can you be in this afternoon to do a sketch? Mm -hmm. And it just so happens I, I have been available most of the times, free mm -hmm. the and you go in and you rehearse it twice, then you sit in your dressing room for about an hour, getting a little nervous, you know, yeah. because that's the, uh, you know, Elvis never went on stage. He, he was called from his dressing room when the comic was uh, just about finishing with his bit. He didn't want to wait around backstage. Yeah. He wanted to walk right in and here, and now here's the king. But then you go up and there's the excitement of, of, that you, you watch Jimmy Kimmel's monologue, and the mm -hmm. stage manager's there, and suddenly he says, all right, 10 seconds, you're on in 10 seconds. And you get a little nervous. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not so much nervous, it's, it's energy. It's a good ah. energy. So and you're able to harness that energy. Yeah. 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 Um, and next thing you know, Jimmy is talking to me, and I'm answering him. And uh, the beauty of it is it's just one take. Yeah. And suddenly it's over. Yeah. It's a wrap. Oh, well, that's it. That's it. They take off my mic, and uh, <laughs> everyone's saying that went great. That went great. So, so I love to do it. I love those short little things where where there's no retakes. Yeah. Uh, they don't say let's take it again from the top. Yeah. So it's uh, like almost it's like live television. 
Right, and it lays, it is what it is. It just lays out as it is. That's right. How long have you been doing improv? It must have been 1966, I would think. Mm -hmm. And I got a call from my agent that they're, they want you to come in. They're auditioning for a new company at Second City. Now, I'd seen the original Second City. Alan Arkin, Barbara Harris, Severn Darden, and I was just floored by seeing them. They did political humor. They did uh, scenes about Kafka. Half of them had beards. They were very, they were like professors. And I said, I can't do that. And they said, well, they had seen me, the, the producers in Chicago had seen me because I worked before that with a partner uh, and we played Mr. Kelly's in Chicago mm -hmm. and the Gate of Horn and a lot of clubs and they'd seen me. And uh, I went in and uh, very reluctantly and they, they asked for, there were about 30 of us in the room and they asked for two of us to stand up and they gave us a, uh, each a subject. And it, one of them was about a folk singer waiting to go on at a coffee shop, which is right down my alley. Because we used to be, as the comedians in the folk, this was during the folk boom, we'd be scheduled to go on at 11 and the owner would come in and say, so-and-so just came in, and we're going to push you back. And finally, at 1 o'clock, they'd introduce us. as the comedy team is so-and-so, and we'd come out and there'd be two or three people left. <laughs> yeah. So that went well, and another one went well, and a third one went well. And finally, he said, we have time for one more. Anyone else want to volunteer? And I put my hand up. So I went to Chicago, and we broke in some uh, old material. And the first night, we were improvising. And um, they pushed me out on the stage to get into the scene. And I got out, and I started talking, and it went very well. And the next night, I had a wonderful joke about a man who was uh, a friend of ours who got killed. Well, he got hit by a truck. No, he had a heart attack. And I came out and said, well, it was both. He got hit by a truck. And if you got hit by a truck, you'd have a heart attack too. <laughs> got a big laugh, but I had nothing left. So that's one it? of the things they taught you. Never come on with a great joke with nothing to back it up. Right. Um, so I did that for one year. And then I got into a group called the Ace Trucking Company, which was a different thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't go for such, uh, you know, extended scenes leading someplace. It was a quick joke, quick, quick, quick. Because mm. you're playing to college students or people in coffee houses who, you know, or, who are eating or drinking. And uh, so it was a different type of improv. Mm. Um, but I still, uh, and it was comfortable working with Christopher Guest because you weren't going for a quick joke. You were trying to make a scene. It was a movie after all, and you knew what the right. scene was. And you were working, you know, if you said something to Catherine O'Hara, she wouldn't blank. She'd come back with something. Eugene Levy would have something funny to say, Bob Balaban. But to this day, I still am a little nervous about improvisation. Right, right. If you were to go to the like the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater right now, you'd, you'd get a little nervous about a new Absolutely. student. Absolutely. If I go back to Second City uh, and they say, they come out at intermission, do you want to get up and do a set with us? No. I, I, <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. Uh, okay. Because there's a... Uh, and, and I talked to Eugene Levy about it, too. He, he feel, feels the same way. And he says, what's worse, when they say that, you know, you're going to be on in the set, and he said, when you come on stage, you get a big applause. And that's makes it even worse, because they're, <laughs> they're really expecting dynamite. Yeah. And if you don't deliver dynamite, it's, oh, well, see, I could have done that. <laughs> Absolutely. And today, when I started out, there was no improv. There was a Second City. There was the committee in San Francisco. That's about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And now every city you go to, there's improv clubs, there's plays that are improvised, There's, uh, and it's a great art, and when you go and see the people doing it today, you think, I, you think, I could never start today, they're so skilled, so wonderful, so many wonderful improvisers. Uh, I, I've worked with the best, and uh, I'm constantly amazed at what great talent there is out there. Yeah. I'm glad I kind of made it to the first plateau, and can kind of look around and say, okay. People say, oh, man, no one can improvise. You're the king of the improv. I say, well, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, yeah. I'll take it. I won't argue. Yeah. But just don't ask me to do it. And people ask me if I do much improv with Jimmy Kimmel. I don't. I haven't started yet. I don't feel mm -hmm. that uh, comfortable. It's uh, The show kind of moves forward pretty quickly, and Jimmy yeah. seems to try to get as much information in. Yeah. So a couple of times, I, one time I said, are we still on? Are we still talking? 
which seemed to get a little bit of a laugh. <laughs> but, um, I did a lot of these with Jay Leno. Mm-hmm. I, I did about 90 of them with Jay, and wow. that was a little looser. Yeah. Because just before I'd go on, the producer would say, make Jay laugh. <laughs> so I was free to say just about anything, and I was usually a, a silly guy with a martini glass in his hand uh, okay. making a report. I'd pretend there was someone off to the side I was talking to, and Jay would have to say, uh, Mr. Will, Will, uh, Fredericks, get back here. I think he called me Willard Fredericks. So it was a lot of fun. But again, it was the same thing. It was all live. Never let's try it again. Yeah. Uh, so you're right, you're right on the spot. What is your favorite character to play so far when uh, you've been working with Jimmy Kimmel? I think my favorite, I was an executive who was in charge of preventing a... Um, a huge meteor from hitting the earth. Oh, and yes. he was asking me what what our de- defensive strategy was. Uh-huh. And I beat around the bush for a few minutes and finally I, I took off my glasses and I said, Jimmy, let's face it, there's no defense against this. <laughs> we just have to keep our fingers crossed. It was a, it was a nice moment. Look, folks, I'm going to level with you. There's no <laughs> way to stop an asteroid from hitting the earth. <laughs> And I played also the guy who was taking um, the SAT tests for the high school students. <laughs> yes. You uh, learned a lot of new vernacular for that, yeah. huh? <laughs> uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I found I, I had to use a lot of the hip new, new teen phrases. <laughs> but even the writers didn't know what they meant, some of them. But just things they'd heard. And uh, <laughs> I got a lot of comments from that. You also learned how to dab. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't quite know. But then I. She did your own spin on it. Yes, well, they they deliberately made it a little off, a little slow motion. <laughs> yes. What what amazes me is the audience he has. <clears throat> People will see see me just friends or on the street say, "I saw you on Kimmel last night." I mean, yeah. it's he must have a huge audience. Yeah. I've known Jimmy on and off for years. I used to go on as a guest when I was promoting a film mm-hmm. or a TV show, and I'd actually sit in front of the audience, and uh, so that that was always fun. And actually, Jimmy was in this house several times uh, uh, for Christmas parties. Then one time I went on, he said, you haven't had me back for a Christmas party, <laughs> the last Christmas party, and I felt terrible. Because oh. I was just thrilled that he, he came. Yeah. Uh, we invited him, and he showed up, and it was a big crowd. I think he came two Christmases in a row. And I said, well, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, take advantage of him and, and, and Ask him to come a third time. Yeah. But he hit <laughs> but he me was when, looking... he, when he, he says, hey, you didn't invite me last Christmas. <laughs> he was looking for the invite. That's right. I feel terrible. <laughs> I mean, you've worked with a lot of, being a, a, a professional late night talk show guest, you've been on Carson, Ed Sullivan, David Letterman. Yes. I mean, it's amazing. The list keeps going. I mean, do, do you have any pointers for young actors who are maybe going on a talk show for their first time? Well, kind of think ahead of time uh, what you're going to be asked and uh, what your answer is going to be. If you're promoting some project, you've got to speak pretty well about it. Make it sound interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe say there's a little twist near the end that we can't disclose. Ah. Something that's a little shocking. I'm not allowed to talk about it. (laughs) The the audience is... uh, It it was very questionable whether we'd leave it in the film or not. You know, something like that. (laughs) And... Just pretend that you're very pleased. Uh, it's very seldom that you see a uh, an actor come on and say they didn't like the director or didn't like right. one of the other actors. Everyone seems to love everybody on these interviews. That's true. Everyone was the most wonderful director. My co-star was the most wonderful. But you've got to do that. Yeah, well, maybe you'd make it more memorable if you did put together a That's a very good thought. I thought of that. I've thought of actually saying we had some ill feelings on the set. <laughs> Maybe you can tell during uh, the halfway through the 30-minute mark how there's some friction between me and my <laughs> co-star, the actress. Uh, you know, anything to draw the people in. Yeah. Do you remember a time when you really bombed a talk show appearance? No, I, I, I don't. <laughs> I got away with an awful lot of stuff. I, I remember once I came on Letterman, there was the trickiest one. I came on Letterman and I had a TV set with a character I'd already done, and I played back and forth with the character, stopping and starting it, you know, like a a comedy team. 
arguing, and I, I sweated that out, and I had to tell the engineers, you know, because when I came on, the t TV set was covered. Mm -hmm. And he said, now, if you wait too long, the TV set is going to start, and it's going to throw off the timing. So oh, wow. uh, I was watching the clock to make sure we got uh, through it all. Right, but you did, and it, it synced yeah, up perfectly. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, are there any Christopher Guest movies on the horizon? Do you know? If there may be several. I never hear. The way I hear is a rumor, some uh, one at a party or something, and saying, oh, my client's going to be in a new Christopher Guest movie. Are you going to be in it too? And I said, uh, that's the first I've heard about it. So ah. I wait by the phone, and luckily enough, the phone rings, and, and Christopher <laughs> is very... Um, you know, uh, Fred, uh, I'm thinking about doing a new movie. I said, oh, is this good news for me? Uh, <laughs> uh, but luckily he's included me in almost everything he's done. Yeah. So I've been very lucky from that. Uh, the first time I worked with him was in Spinal Tap. That, that wasn't his mm -hmm. movie. It was Carl Reiner who directed right. it. But I worked with Christopher and Harry Shearer and Michael McKeon. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was all improvised, the scene we did. We, we did it about four different times, three from my angle looking at them as they mm -hmm. came in this Air Force base. And then once they turned the camera around on me, and I just said anything I, that came into my mind. Mm -hmm. And um, then he called me for the first one that he directed was Waiting for Guffman. Right. And uh, that started to change everything. Uh, it was... Uh, I was thrilled to be working with my, uh, the people I worked with, Catherine O'Hare, Eugene Levy. I, I was such a fan of theirs and, uh, and uh, Christopher Guest. I'd seen him on Saturday Night Live. I'd met him socially a few times. Mm -hmm. But it was, just, it was just so much fun. It was like a, a party every day or a picnic doing these scenes. You'd never think that it's going to be seen in a theater audience. <laughs> you were just doing it to, to try to get this story told and get in a joke or two, and uh, uh, when it came out, it, it, it did quite well. Now, um, you recently played God in the historical roasts. Yes. Uh, you know, Jeffrey Ross is the king of the roasters, mm -hmm. and he's roasted about everything, and he finally decided to roast people who are no longer living. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> He ran out of people. Ran out of living people. <laughs> He wanted to roast someone who couldn't sue him. <laughs> so um, this was a roast of um, Anne Frank, mm -hmm. which people think, oh, that's very tasteless. But that's just, um, that's just key to, to be tasteless, but in a loving way. Mm -hmm. So I got a call on a Friday night from my agent. Uh, Jeff Ross would like you to come in on Monday and play God. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, that, someone must have dropped out. Friday. <laughs> My agent said, I don't know. This is a last-minute thing. I, I don't think uh, you should. I, I, I say you pass. I said, okay. And I said, no, I'd kind of like to do that. I don't know. Saturday afternoon, the phone rang. And it was, Fred, it's Jeff. And I said, right away, I said, oh, I'm going to do his show. <laughs> he said, you know, this part of God. And I said, Jeff, I'm a, you're my friend. I owe you a lot. Uh, I'll do it. So Monday, uh, Monday we shot it, and I was God, and he talked to me as God. How can these terrible things? That was the key thing. Anne Frank and Hitler, uh, Gilbert Gottfried played Hitler. <laughs> we had Eleanor Roosevelt. We had uh, Delano Roosevelt. And uh, Jeff Ross would occasionally talk to me. How would you let these things happen? I go, well, these things, you know, I can't cover everything. Um, <laughs> and it was done, and it, he was doing three a week. And he didn't know to the last minute who he was going to cast and what, but it was great. And you always have trust in Jeffrey Ross. He's, he's always doing something like that. So, so that was fun. So I played God. I don't think I ever played God on Jimmy Kimmel. I did play George Washington, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, is there times. anything left to play? You've played George Washington. You've played God. Like, who... Is there any character you haven't played yet that you wish you could play? Babe Ruth. I'm a big baseball ah. fan. I think that would be fun. Get <laughs> a putty really... nose and uh, be the real Babe Ruth with real troubles, real problems, real complaints. <laughs> yeah. Fred Willard, thank you so much for being here, and uh, we'll be looking for you.